Okay. Uh, so actually, during the last year, I decided to build my own mechanical keyboard. And um, yeah, in the like after I built everything and assembled everything, uh, it was the time to sort of uh, go ahead and decide what kind of keyboard layout I um I should use. And um, I'm thinking because every all of us uh, spend a lot of time typing every day, right? So this is why I'm thinking it is worth putting a bit more thoughts into how to optimize the keyboard layout. And um, so QMK is actually an open source firmware for mechanical keyboards, which um, I mean, that's for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, QMK uh, is an open source firmware which uh, sort of is, yeah lets you uh, customize almost every aspect of, of your layout. And uh, in the following slides, I will just uh, sort of give a few suggestions. I would say um, for people who use QMK, uh, how to optimize the keyboard layout. And uh, even if you don't have access to the firmware of your keyboard, because obviously you need to be able to flash the microcontroller, right? But actually there are also software tools available, which you can just install on uh, Windows or Mac or wherever. And then uh, those software tools can actually take the inputs of your default keyboard and um, sort of emulate the functionality of QMK as well. So that means uh, many of the things I'm uh, showing here, you can actually also um, replicate it on the software side, yeah. So, okay, maybe let's start with a normal layout you would probably find in a um, off-the-shelf keyboard. So this one is um, like a QWERTY layout. So that means, like if you buy a keyboard, usually um, all those keys uh, will be arranged uh, according to QWERTY. And QWERTY is like the name of the keyboard layout because those are the first characters in the first row. And um, essentially, uh, my first suggestion is to change to a layout uh, <laughs> other than QWERTY because um, QWERTY was actually developed back in the day when they had those old mechanical typewriters and it was actually designed to be slow because apparently if you type fast on a mechanical typewriter, it causes those uh, hammers, which in, uh, yeah, you have to jam in the end, right? So, and um, nowadays they have much more modern keyboard layout and those keyboard layouts actually use some sensible metrics to optimize um, if, yeah, to decide like where to place the keys on the keyboard, essentially, right? Um, so examples are Dora, Cormac, and uh, Walkman. And usually the metric they are optimizing is finger movement. Um, and this is also, most of the time is language specific because you can imagine like every language uses different characters differently, right? So those uh, three in this case are optimized for the English English language, but there are keyboard layouts for every, every lang other language as well, I guess. But when you say optimized, so everything you say to their uh, speed, but what I would want to optimize for is, is you know, like they have- mm, Yeah, so, so, so I mean, uh, speed is actually not a big, like it's actually not the, the, the what they're optimizing for. Like what I said, right? Usually they're optimizing for finger movement. So that means what you essentially want to do is, you want to move your finger as little as possible to reach uh, to reach most of the keys you need, and only in certain um, set, uh, yeah few cases you would need to reach far away to type the key. Yeah, so, so this is when I say they move, they optimize for finger movement. Is um they uh, they want you to not move your fingers a lot essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um anyways, so this is the first suggestion. If you want to optimize your typing. Uh, you can consider switching to uh, another layout and uh, QMK actually allows you to yeah. place the keys individually. <laughs> so that means you have to control over every single key on the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Another feature QMK uh, supports are layers. And um, you can imagine a layer of being like a set of keys, which you can enable and disable. And um, layers can be stacked on top of each other. So that means, um, you can have, uh, I think, up to 32 different layers. And uh, I mean, not that anyone would use it, but I think uh, you can have 32 different sets of keys. And always the top the topmost is the one which is active. So that means if you want to switch back, you need to deactivate them. So and uh, how I used it in my case is uh, I implemented layers for symbols and another layers for numbers and navigation. So, OK, this is the 
symbol layer, and then another one for um for the navigation and for the like as a numpad sort of right. And uh, why I do this is because if you usually look at the standard default layout, uh, yeah, you can see that the numbers and the symbols are mostly on the top or on the edge of the keyboards, like either here or somewhere in this region. And uh, so if it's on the edge, that means that uh, you need to move your fingers a lot in order to reach them, right? And uh, to make that more easy, you can uh, put your symbols and numbers a bit more closer to the center. And actually, so, so those dash keys are the ones uh, which is the home row, so called. So, so that means this is the natural resting position of your finger. So all the keys you have over here, they will be very easy to reach because they are just under your fingertips. Yeah. So, and in order to um, synchronize those layers to each other, I um, arrange the keys according to Vim. So some of you might know, so Vim is like a command line text editor. And um, so essentially see those keys over here. There are different um, shortcuts for in Vim to, for example, um, change to the beginning of a line or to the end of a line. So it's a step to the carrot and, and, the, um, and, and the dollar signs. So, and those ones would correspond to those two keys in my layer below. So I don't need to remember two different key positions. Yeah. And the same for um, in Vim, you have functions to change between words. So W press would bring you to the next word and uh, B, which is this key in, in Core Mac, would bring you to the previous word. So, and this is meant to, to W and B respectively. So that means it just makes my life easier to uh, not having to remember so many key, different key positions. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Then the next suggestion is to use home, run, home row modifiers, keys, which, um, okay, on, on one hand can be your ordinary shift control, control keys or other modifier keys are the ones which allow, allow it to switch between, between layers, right? Mm. And by placing those keys on the home row, you essentially um, avoid uh, all the finger movements involved with uh, activating layers and shift and control. So how it works is, um, say you have a control key over here. If you just tap it, meaning press and release, it will um, act as uh, the key you define. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, just a letter or a symbol or a number, whatever. And if you uh, press it and then uh, press it together with another key, then it will act as control. So that means uh, you sort of don't need to move your fingers away from the home row uh, in order to activate those things. So, and uh, okay, we have shift, shift control. This uh, is a layer toggle, which in my case activates the symbols layer. And um, the pinky, oh no, it's the, yeah, the pinky activates the navigation and numbers layer. And uh, okay, on this side, it's just a normal layer model. But on this side, I implemented it as a tap dance. And uh, tap dance is another QMK function, which essentially lets you define different actions for any number of key presses. So you press one, you have one function, you press uh, twice, you have another function, and so on. So, okay, how I um, make use of this is if I single tap, it will just um, activate the letter A in this case, or maybe the, the symbol according to this position, right? If I um, press it and hold it, it will just act, act as a layer toggle and activate the, um, the number layer. And if I double press, it will lock the number layer. So it, you can think of it as a num lock. How do you type R or? Sorry? How do you type R or? R what? Oh, okay. So, so um, yeah, if it has two A's, um, I haven't encountered this scenario actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in, in this case, um, you can uh, you can either uh, tap it slowly because essentially, uh, so so to, as to avoid um, it to be recognized as a double tap, because what you can actually do as well um, within QMK is you can up, uh, modify all your um, your timings. So that means uh, you can actually set how many milliseconds it should be in order for it to be recognized as a double tap or as two separate keystrokes. Yeah. So you can, and this is also like, I guess, part of the optimization. Like if you type and then you feel, um, I frequently hit the, the issue that I um, activated in terms of that is, but not get the double tap, right? 
So then you can adjust the timing to make it quicker, for example, right? Yeah. It's the same as uh, adjusting a double click mouse speed. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. Then um, if you still think that there are keys which are too far away for you to reach, you can uh, now shift them around because uh, of your home room modifiers, there are a lot of free spaces available. So what I did in this case was um, I moved the backspace from all the way over in this corner uh, to here where the caps was and the caps was here. And uh, the enter, I also moved a bit closer. I mean, on my keyboard, it's maybe a bit more uh, different because I use the auto linear layout. So that means actually my uh, enter key is on the, on the shift, which uh, is quite convenient to reach, I would say. And um, yeah, the UK in my space, uh, in my case, is av available through shift and backspace. Yeah. What do you have like the large key that normally we have? Like, uh, sorry, the large key? Oh, I mean, there's a double size key, right? This one? Uh, here? Yes, yeah, that's one. Yeah. Oh, this is empty in this case. Yeah. I, I mean, actually, after moving it around, um, <laughs> there are some keys I have, I, and, and I feel like they are too far away, anyways. Yeah. So, okay, after this, um, what you can do, or actually, before you do this, what uh, my last suggestion is to sort of monitor your single. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that means uh, this is uh, in in my case it looks like this. So and uh, it, there are ways to generate the uh, the heat map for your keyboard. And actually, what I developed is this app over there, which is like a sort of a website which you can um, where you can configure like a a plugin for Q and K or like a function which uh, records the key counts in the background. And then in the end uh, of the day, before you unblock it or something, you can upload it to the website. And then over time, uh, your key counts will be accumulated in the database, right? And then it will draw you a uh, key like this. And then, I mean, for me, it's actually already a bit too late because I kind of optimized most of the stuff. But if you start optimizing your keyboard and then you see, oh, okay, I have a lot of key presses like they over there in the upper right corner. And then um, essentially, you know uh, what what to do uh, and, and how to shift keys around. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I can click the link, I can show you how it looks like. No, no, I, I will use this one. No, but the keyboard layout is in zebra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so essentially, um, what what you get after installing this um thing on your mechanical keyboard, you can uh, assign a key code which uh dumps the key code of the end, at the end of the day, right? So in this case, when I press a uh, sort of key combination, it will um sort of print the key code it has accumulated. I mean now zero because it's uh because I haven't typed yet, right? But if you do it uh, after a while, it will um. Yeah, it will show all the key counts and then you submit and uh, draw the heat map, which will hash for you if you so the everyone knows has the, uh, their the own key, uh, their own heat map and then yeah, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so and uh, okay, back to the presentation. Okay. So in conclusion, uh, so you can shift keys around all you want, right? I mean, the problem is that shifting it around is one thing, but actually learning how to touch type with a new layer is a, is a whole other thing. So, I mean, I um, found out that it, it takes me at least a few weeks to sort of get it right and a few months to actually get fast with it. So that means, especially if you want to uh, make major changes to your keyboard layout, um, it's, yeah, it can be quite disruptive to your workflow at first. So then uh, another thing uh, I found is like home mod modifiers because the sort of weights for the for another key to be pressed, it will induce some latency while typing. I mean, not that you, if you touch type, it doesn't really matter so much, but for example, if you have um, Fusion 360 and then you want to use uh, control and mouse wheel to, to zoom in and zoom out, right? So there, there will always be a delay be before you can uh, scroll because it's the delay before it will be recognized as a control press. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing I um, have a lot. And then another thing is um, there are some allocations which work better at the autolinear layout. So I showed you here, this is where actually your, the keys are um, arranged in a straight line. 
So that means if you do arrow keys or the num number pad, it's actually better if it's this way. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, so um, I wrote like a blog for this keyboard, which includes the information I presented here. And you can search on hackaday.io uh, for Lepta 60, which is the, the name of the keyboard. And uh, then you can find uh, this and all the other information. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.